it is hugely important to make sure you have the right people at the show on the day. You've likely got a number of colleagues who would like to go, and some who don't want to, but the decision on who attends should be based upon maximising your return. First, consider your stand size. Divide your square metres by 8, or square feet by about 70, and that will tell you the maximum number of people you should have on the stand. If you have more, it will be tricky to find a comfortable place to speak to people. If you have too few, your stand will look empty. No one wants to go to an empty restaurant, and the same logic follows for your stand. Think about what sort of visitors you want to attract to your stand, and staff accordingly. It's a gut reaction to send the most junior salespeople to the show, because the more senior people are incredibly busy already. But if you want to engage senior prospects in strong qualifying conversations, having a level of experience on site will help you massively. With that said, if you simply want to build as many names as possible, then send the juniors to collect business cards and make the introductions. Having an evenly split female to male ratio is usually advisable. Different people feel varying levels of comfort with different genders. Ensure that all of your potential prospects will have someone with whom they feel comfortable. Agree on a dress code early on. There's nothing worse than having everyone suited and booted and one person showing up in jeans and a t-shirt. Having company uniforms is always an option, but beware, if your brand colour is orange, what if some of your team simply don't look good in orange? You also don't want your stand to look like a McDonald's, so if you do go for branded outfits, make sure they are subtle and still allow space for individual team members to have a level of personal expression. One top tip that few think about, wear comfortable shoes. You're going to be spending a few days on your feet. There's nothing worse than getting a blister in the morning of the first day than being in pain until the doors close. And lastly, but very importantly, make sure you nominate one person to deal with the logistics. Sometimes it shows something bad happens. Your electricity goes down, a sign falls down, or the carpet tears. Get all your organiser and contractor contacts saved into your phone so you can call them easily without having to search for their number. You should also put this person in charge of managing the petty cash and scheduling lunch and coffee breaks for the team. Doing this on an ad hoc basis will cause all sorts of problems. The last thing you want is to be short-staffed when it gets busy. 